Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's The Last Ninja, brought to us by Jaleco. The Last Ninja is actually a port of The Last Ninja 2. The Last Ninja series was originally released on the Commodore 64 and several other computer-based systems. This port of The Last Ninja 2 is considered widely inferior to the original releases. This version was developed by Beam Software instead of the original creator's System 3. In The Last Ninja, we take control of Arma Kunai, the sole survivor of a ninjutsu clan which is destroyed by an evil shogun known as Kanatoke. Even though the evil shogun was destroyed at the end of Last Ninja 1, in this game we're actually going to destroy the spirit, or the ghost, of that evil shogun. So here we go with The Last Ninja for the NES. You start off by selecting either a new game, or you can use a password to continue on where you may have left off, as well as turn on or off the music in the game. As we start off the game, you have to get used to the controls, which are going to take a while to get used to. The isometric look is much better used on the PC, and getting used to the directions on the Nintendo D-pad will take you a little bit. Basically, left and right and up and down are kind of reversed while moving through this game. At the bottom left, you can see your health meter as well as your opponent's health meter for any time there's an enemy on screen. What you'll notice is, it's kind of like a little bit of a maze down there, and when the inside of the maze completely gets worn out, then the maze itself will be deleted, and that's when you run out of health. In the first room, we pressed a button on the far end after defeating the first enemy, which opened up another area so that we could get outside. Getting used to the fighting will take you a while, as it's kind of a really time-based thing. Once you land your first attack on an enemy, just keep mashing the attack button as fast as possible, or use a turbo controller in order to keep delivering hits to knock out enemies. If you hesitate while attacking an enemy, it'll give them a good opportunity to start delivering hits to you. To jump in the game, you actually have to be moving in a direction since the punch, as well as the jump button, are the same button. Over there, by making those jumps, we were able to pick up the stick weapon, which not only increases damage to enemies, but it also increases the stun between every hit of an enemy, so you have more time in order to press the next attack. If you're able to get used to the jumping, sometimes it's actually better just to try to avoid some of these enemies while moving through the screens. Every enemy will then start replenishing health, though, every time you knock them out, and once that fully replenishes, the enemy will get back up and start fighting again. Over here, we take out this guy, and then you can actually walk into the women's bathroom and pick up a pair of nunchucks. We'll quickly return to the next screen and try to get past this enemy to the next screen before he ends up waking up. The hardest thing to get used to while playing this game is definitely being able to line up with your enemies in order to actually be able to hit them. Sometimes you'll think you'll be lined right up, but you'll be slightly off and that'll give the enemy an advantage to start doing damage to you. Sometimes the enemy will be in a certain position where you won't be able to hit them, but they'll be able to keep lashing in hits against you. If that does happen, try to walk away, usually the best bet being walking to a previous screen and then coming back on so that you can try to realign once again with that enemy. You do have two sets of inventory. One is weapons, while the other one is items. Be sure to equip the key so that you can open up that gate there to get through. This area is extremely tricky in order to get the timing right on the jump so that you can land on the boat and then get across the water. You're probably going to lose a few lives while trying to attempt this. With the swarm of bees on this screen, I walked off to the high left side so I could reset them, and then when I came back on, I was able to get them in a nice position where I could avoid them and get up to the next part of the screen. Here, use the button in order to kind of tap the boat so that it starts moving. Then go back to the previous screen so that you'll eventually see the boat slowly start coming down. Once again, you have to time your jump just about perfect 
so you're in order to get across the gap and over to the next part. After that extremely tricky jump, we've completed the first level of the game and we move on to the streets, the second level. As we begin this level, quickly walk down and get across the street while the light is still green. If you cross while it's red, you will end up getting hit by a motorcycle enemy that will quickly come up from the bottom of the screen. Walk up to the door at the top of this screen and use the kick button in order to bust down the door. Inside, take out the enemy and then grab the sword on the far wall. The sword is the best weapon that we can pick up during the course of the game. Now here, you have to actually cross while the light is red because it's signifying the other crossway. Walking on that side of the street while green will cause that motorcycle to appear and hit you. Here we can pick up another hamburger, which every time you pick up one, actually gives you an extra life. Down here, pick up the bottle. We won't be able to do anything with this bottle for a while, but it's a crucial item in order to complete the game. Inside here, we grab the key for this area. With the key now in our possession, we actually have to go back to right near the beginning of the level. And there's another entrance way that we can go down in order to get to a sewer entrance. I'm not exactly sure how a key will unlock a manhole cover, but that's what we have to do. Be very careful once again, only cross this area while it's red, and then when we cross the next stream, wait for it to turn green. After crossing the street, enter into the next way, and then just continue walking straight to get to the next screen, take out the enemy, and then you may have noticed that the sewer hole flashed a couple of seconds, showing you that you actually can open that up. All the places in the game where you can either unlock a door or put an item somewhere will usually flash when you enter the screen the first time, showing you that you actually can do something with that particular entrance way. Use the key on the manhole cover, and now you enter the sewers, the third level of the game. Try to avoid the enemy and enter into the right side here. In here, we must take out the enemy or else it'll be pretty annoying as we try to get the key on the far end of the room. Once you get back out, now head up, being sure to jump so that you can get over the ledge. Once you make the gap over here, you have to actually jump up and avoid the spider as it comes up from behind, as it will be an instant death if it runs into you. Here, we have to enter the middle of the three entrances. The other two will lead to a death. On this one, enter the one on the far left, and then on the next screen, jump over the rats, avoiding both of the entranceways as you work your way up. As soon as you enter the next screen, immediately enter the first door. If you do so quickly, the enemy won't be able to catch up to you. Here, equip the bottle that we picked up in the street level, and then use it over here on the flame to light the bottle on fire. 
Now, you must throw the bottle at the alligator here in order to defeat it. Once the alligator disappears, you can enter the entranceway in order to make it to the next level. Be sure to wait carefully for that alligator to disappear before you enter it. As soon as the next level starts, start immediately attacking as there's an enemy right in front of you, and if you master the attack button quick enough, you should be able to start delivering hits to him. On this screen, grab the piece of chicken on the far end of the room, keep it in your inventory, and then drop it in the opium. 